The boosh is on the loosh. Oh, yeah. Aha. He's oh. back. Actually, we hey, uh, how about you fair me your boosh? Aha. See, okay, Jesse, I'm going to send you something in a second. Because you know there's I mean? a couple things I want to talk about first. Mm-hmm. Before we talk about the Leafs trade and the Leafs game and a whole bunch of other things that we need to talk about. Okay? So I'm sending Jesse this picture. I want to first let you know that today is a great day. And it's Why? a great day to sign up for the SDPN Grid Rival Pool. If you're a motorsports fan, Formula One fan... Uh, Tim and I, Justin Fisher, I, Justin, Jesse, are you joining the grid r- grid rival this year? No. Ah, oh, it's because he's no. scared. Because I don't afraid. like it. I got no chance at winning, so he's I don't afraid. want to participate. It's, That's right. It's just well, a headache. I'm gonna do it Speaking because of. I'm gonna win. Speaking of <clears throat> McLaren, we got a weekend ahead you, of us. You got a McLaren shirt. That's right. Yeah, it's race weekend, baby. Yeah, and their driver's his name is Fraser McLaren. N- no, it's not. It's Lando and, Norris, oh. Oscar Piastri. Oh. Piastri. Oh, hey, oh. hey Ital- uh, uh, Italian, Australian, lots of them, like Joe Avati they, and Daniel Ricardo. Wow, yeah, there's so How about many. that, so many of them. Um, so, uh, so join join that. Also, the SDP VIP episode. When did you have it drop? It was like two a.m. or something this morning. No, it drops at like midnight on whatever Friday. It like oh, it drops at on Friday. There so you go. Whenever Friday starts. So it's up. Oh. And and if you want to subscribe, <laughs> you get thirty days uh, on most platforms. You get like a thirty day trial, which is pretty cool. Um, I think on YouTube was yeah, it? No, that's uh, Apple, just, Apple just you 30 on days. YouTube. If you're a YouTube Premium uh, subscriber already, if you sign up for a membership, it comes with a 30 day free trial. On Apple Podcasts, you get a 14 day free trial, and on Spotify, the first episode is free. There you go. Got it. And that's up to the platforms. We don't decide that. They they decide that stuff. But anyway, long story short, sign up to be an SDP VIP. It's four dollars a month. It supports the company, small business, tough times. Really, really would appreciate your support. Also, the content's great. I get a lot of tweets and emails and stuff about like, hey, how do I join and all that stuff? And so we've made it super easy. It's in the description of this podcast you're listening to. There's a link to YouTube, to Apple, to Spotify. Click whichever one you want. It is right there. And so too is our, we'll put our Grid Rival link in there too. Can we do that? Oh, maybe. Yeah. And also we'll there's see. prizes this year for first, second, and third. <laughs> we got some gift cards from uh, Shop Race Canada so you can buy cool cars, baby. Yeah. Real full co- no, just the diecast one. You get to give Steve oh. a hug. Yeah, you get to give Steve a nice <laughs> hug. If you're the champion, <laughs> you get to drive to Ajax and give Steve a hug. Steve gives you a little little kiss on the forehead. <laughs> I got uh, great forehead kiss. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it's one of the skills you acquire with a five foot tall wife. That's true. Good point. Good point. Now, Jesse, can we bring up this tweet? It's ready. Our boy Elliot Coates. Oh, it's, it's not, not ready. ready. Oh my goodness. It's not ready it's because not Jesse ready. didn't plug in. I want to shout out Elliot Coates though, because Elliot made an investment, Steve. Yeah? Yeah. And sometimes you gotta make an investment in yourself. And sometimes people will say, You're crazy for making this investment. What a silly idea. Why would you do that? Did he spend forty thousand dollars on a photo of a monkey smoking a cigarette no he did not no he spent a lot less than that oh and i think he got a lot more for his money are we ready to show elliot now it is working there we go elliot said everybody said i was crazy for buying a labushka jersey but here we're we're back baby Ah, yo that's incredible so he had he got a labushkin jersey the first time he was on the team and he's got it back right that's got to be such a good feeling you're walking around, you have a jersey for someone who's not on the team anymore, and then they get them back. It's like somebody who bought a Brad Boys jersey in 2002. Yeah, I And then, I, and then I in 28, 2017, they're like, this is my year. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's what I was trying to figure out. When was the last time the Leafs traded for a player twice? Not signed them twice, not signed them once and traded for them, traded for them, oh, signed them. Sounds like there's a good uh, video in here. There could be. It's not Roman Polak, right? Can't be Roman Polak. And it's not Daniel Winnick. They traded away twice. They traded away twice. Got the, back twice. Yannick Perot? Oh. See, did they draft him, though? They well, So they drafted him. Let me look. And then they traded. Because remember, they got rid of most of their draft picks. Uh, uh, anybody, always. Always. Forever. And then, they, still, they still do that. But eh? they traded for Yannick Perot and his weird visor. Um, his cool visor. It, his here. visor went that went past his chin. I was like, just put a face mask on, man. Who are we kidding? Um, it helped and, him win faceoffs. And he, they got him, and he scored like a big goal against Philadelphia in like 1998 or something. And then they got him again going into the trade deadline, like 2007 or something. You know what? Okay, 
He was drafted by the Leafs in 1991, played 13 games. Then he went to the LA Kings for a few years. The Leafs traded, or yeah, it looks like they traded for him midseason, 98-99. And then they got him back midseason, 2006-07 from the Arizona Kings. Ha, I remember that go. verbatim. That's like the first time. Hot damn. <laughs> And I remember liking him because he won a lot of face-offs. That's all I really cared about. He's like, big face-off guy. Yeah, so, bro. Wow. So what was it? Two years ago, Labushin comes over trade deadline. Yes. yes. Plays 31 games for Labushin. Was it trade deadline? I think it was a November trade, and was it not Nick Ritchie? It wasn't November, was it? but it was... Uh, he was... Like, 31 games is way more games than I thought Labushkin played for the league. Yeah. 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 It was uh, like winter. It was a winter. It was a winter. And trip. and in between that time, Elliot's like, I'm going to get a Labushkin jersey. Even though he's a UFA, he just got here. I'm going to be a Labushkin fan. That's yeah. that's some serious dedication With, to being were, a, in the Bush Army. There were O'Reilly the jerseys. Bush Army. <laughs> the Bush Army. I guess, like, even O'Reilly jerseys. The is Bush like, Party. At least, like, wait till he sees if he signs. It's also, dedication. It's Ryan O'Reilly. This is. This is Ilya Labushkin. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> There's a difference. I'll be honest. I was grumpy about this trade. I'll yeah. Tell you why I was grumpy about the a trade. A lot of people I spoke to last night were grumpy about I was about grumpy it. about the trade because I thought, okay, is this the, so, so this is the guy you want to play with Riley. And what was explained to me by... Oh, also, just one note. Uh, Labushkin was a Leaf on February 29th or 19th. So it was like a month till trade. Oh, okay. My bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought it was... Uh, maybe I got that. I got, yeah. I must have got February that 19th was the Nick Ritchie Labushkin trade. There, wow, Nick. Oh, because the season started weird too, right? That uh, year. This is uh, 2022, so no. Oh no, you're not. You're you have a grace period started. between 2020 and I'm I'm gonna extend it to 2022. Okay. On account of the world, the world for sure yeah. was crazy. But okay, so I'm grumpy about the boost trade, and CJ re- explains it like this in the chat. He's like, okay, so they gave up a third and a sixth because they needed the double retention with Carolina. Yes. And uh, he is not. And, and and I don't think he understood why I was grumpy because I didn't really explain it because usually grumpy people are not great communicators. And so <laughs> I was not communicating. I'm like, let's be honest. You're like, this is I, I kind of was like, ah, let the let the fart out of the bag. It's not great. And I don't know if that's the saying. it's the saying now. OK, I've made it the saying. All right. And I think the reason I was like that is I'm like, this is the guy you get to play with Riley. Not that I had a problem with Bush the first time. In his limited role. Yeah. He, he, he handles the puck like it's a grenade. He's not a good puck handler. He did score like a goal on a two on one. <laughs> sure. And it was his first goal in like God knows how long. Sure. It's kind of fun. And he's 30 and, and that sort of thing. I'm not even looking at the internet charts that are being thrown around because they said the same they, thing about Simon Benoit and he's been great. They don't count. But Chris the, is like the ducks. He did, they don't count. Chris's response to me in the group chat, and I think you guys all saw this, was well, like he makes like less than half that than Connor Timmons. And he's and I'm like, oh, we're talking about a seventh defenseman here. Yeah. So here's here's because right because Gio went out, and I'm sure True Living was like calling the dressing room, and going, "Is Gio going to be out for a while?" The way it was talked about on Thirty Two Thoughts today is they were already talking about making this deal, and then Gio got hurt, and it's like, all right, <laughs> we got to do twice. it. Yeah. Like uh, maybe they were thinking about who knows, maybe they didn't need double retention before, but because they're doing it early, they did. When you think about it in terms of what the Leafs paid for, Mm -hmm. they paid, I think, market value. And people are going to laugh at that because a third and a sixth for a guy who might not even be in your top six when the playoffs start sounds ludicrous. You paid a third round pick to get Ilya Labushkin, who shoots right, no matter how bad you think he is, at half retained. That costs something, right? Yep. Then Carolina needs to be paid for their services in all this. Mm -hmm. They retain half on him or a quarter. Um, A sixth round pick for that is pretty reasonable. One thing I will give the Leafs credit for, they weren't the ones who signed him to what I believe was a multi-year $2.75 million contract. Uh, was that the Ducks or the Sabres? I don't know. You, whoever did that, you're nuts. <laughs> you're yeah. nuts. It was, uh, I like what, this 
it was when he signed with the offseason the, with the Sabres. Kevin Adams signed that. Good point seven five million dollars for two years. I like this player more than most, and that's a disaster. Well, you got to remember he's like, coming off the playing with the Leafs in the playoffs, so you get the Leafs bump. Yes. Uh, you know, the little Leafs. That's bump. why Max Domi's here. That's why Tyler Bertuzzi's here. You get the Leafs bump when you're done. I think Max Alexander is Kerfoot is in I Arizona know. with a nice contract for a reason. Yeah, Matt, he's making the exact same money he was as he was making last year. So and and that's wow. that's a bump. That is Let's a bump. be honest. So you, you look at it and you go, the Leafs paid a third and a six for Ilya Labushkin, which is true if you don't examine how he got there. Like, it's it's like, you know, uh, uh, what's what's that show where he's like, the best I can do is $40. Oh, uh, um, the History Network show. Yeah. yeah you, you know yeah, what I mean? The bald guy? Yeah. Who's like, oh, I got, I got a guy. Let me call him. He's, he's the best coin expert in the state. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's the best antique nutcracker guy in all of Pawn Stars, Wyoming. It? Yeah, Pawn Stars. Um, he's got costs, you know? So the Ducks and the Hurricanes are like, well, yes, it's Ilya Labushkin, but I got costs, right? Then there's the really funny conspiracy theory that the Hurricanes help facilitate the deal because the Leafs are in the Eastern Conference. They're going to be in the playoffs, and they wanted to help the Leafs get worse. <laughs> Okay. That's that's my own fun conspiracy theory that I saw several other people make. But what, it, really what this is, is this is a trade for a depth defenseman that keeps the Leafs open to trading for the defenseman who we really want that is going to play with Riley. You you want Connor Timmons playing playoff games? You want Max Lajoie playing playoff games? Then shut up and eat your Ilya Labushkin. <laughs> Ilya Labushkin played <laughs> seven playoff games that 22 22- uh, season. Oh, that, he was like a top he, four member of the he staff. Played, he played every game. Like, yeah, I think there's a there's just a familiarity with Labushkin where it's hey, we know what we have in this player. We've seen him before, and Brad for living obviously hasn't, but the rest of the staff has. Like, nothing's really changed when since Dubas has left, except for Dubas and Spezza. So everybody's still there, and they say, hey, let's go get some depth D, and we're gonna make more moves. It's fine. At less than a league minimum player, league min is nine twenty five. They're playing. They're paying six some six and change for a two point seven five million dollar defenseman. It's it's, it's not nine twenty five. It's it's like seven something. Oh, seven something or eight hundred. Nine twenty five. I'm thinking is the, uh, the ELC, ro- rookie ELC yeah, yeah, yeah. deal. Yeah. So league min. It's it's about a hundred grand less than league min. So it's it's fine. Like it's not it's not gonna end the Leafs or make them. Yeah. The dark. The dark part of this is like there's a real good chance. Well, there's a greater than zero percent chance Mark Giordano's played his last NHL game, and that was last night, mm-hmm. right? Like that. That that fall seemed really aggressive. Oh, and like, then there was one replay where, again, I'm not a doctor, but he he looked out for at least a second. Uh, it's bad, man. It's bad, and the the Leafs are. Very obviously treading water. They pulled off the win last night, but it you know didn't look great. Six lefties. They got an eleven million dollar forward on D, which sucks. Like although he looked good, Mitch Marner looked I, good. I, yeah, I don't he think looked that sucks. It's he looked awesome. Good. <laughs> he looked good. How did the forward group look without him? Fine. No, they won. No, they didn't. They won. They were barely treading water against Leafs the are, Arizona Coyotes. Leafs I think eight and one. Eight and one. I don't think yeah, I don't think it has that. to do with I think they won that game on talent and zero effort. Oh, I think I don't think that they I, I think if you're trying to look at the forward route with Mitch Martin or not on it, but playing defense and you're looking at last night's game and figuring it out on the fly, you're kidding yourself. Yeah. Like there, there's no way that that was the Leafs best effort. We know that this team takes nights off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and yeah. last night at in uh, starting from they could have put that game away on the power play where they gave up. You know, they they were up three nothing. What was that pinch? And you, what the you, hell was that? Pinch? All you got to do is score in that power play. Game is over. And they let as soon as they scored, I'm like, Carol or um, uh, Arizona's getting back in this game. I knew it. I knew it would at least get to three two. I would have bet money on it. I would have bet MGM'd it. Yeah. Yeah. The big story. The king of sports books. Whoa. Official uh, partner of the NHL. Like, uh it's listen, I like I admitted in the uh, uh, not the LFR. I made two videos last night. I admitted in the Labushkin trade video. I'm talking myself into this deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, like, how about it's just fine and it's not you don't have to get excited about it. Well, I also didn't see enough admission that, hey, we were wrong about Simone Benoit. That oh, there was mean- no you're, you're talking about people who are putting the stats cards out. Yeah, you're you're like admission. Who's we? Who? 
<laughs> well, and everyone, we? everyone posting those cards. Yeah, that says player bad, and like <laughs> you're so. But you're just you're going at just fans. No, that's not true. No, I'm going at the fans. Go by uh, the numbers they're given. Like a lot, m the vast majority of fans are not tracking like zone entries and shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're, they're just like. But they are taking know. the cards but from the people that do yeah. and going, see data. Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 I, and I don't, I'm and not you're giving upset them at for that. I don't know. Why are you upset? No, like I'm giving, like, okay, the person I'm really giving crap to. Yeah. And, and I'm not attacking this what guy, you, but it is kind of funny is Dom decision uh, because he said in the summer that uh, Simone Benoit had like the worst player card he's seen. Yeah. Based on his model, which is fine. And like, I didn't know anything about Simone Benoit. Mm -hmm. And your video got 100,000 views, which is on insane. Simone Benoit, <laughs> which is insane. <laughs> and everyone's like, uh, well, I guess he sucks. I, I had people reach out to me when that signing was made, and they're like, that is not an NHL player, like at all. And like, they weren't talking about numbers or nothing. They were just like, I've seen him play, he can't play. And so because people were wrong about Simone Benoit during the summer that there we should all hold back judgment on Ilya Lubitsky. Well, let's let's just acknowledge that uh we can be wrong and that dude, I said this long before the Leafs were going after Ilya Lubushkin. Numbers with the worst teams in the league, namely the Ducks, they don't count. Mm -hmm. They're such a sad sack piece of garbage that they don't count. You, you, have you seen the complete uh, black hole of joy that that team plays with and has played with? You're talking the about the Ducks. The Ducks, right? They're yeah, miserable. Yeah, flavorless, strategyless, oh garbage. Oh, my God. Terrible. The church wafer of hockey teams right now. They'll give you a Michigan goal every two, three months and then dick all otherwise. And you know what you got to do? Well, Trade the guy that scores the Michigan goal. You got to do that because that will... I don't know. That's you know what? A little bit of sugar on the wafer helps. Let's you know what? Take away the sugar. <laughs> if you're gonna eat garbage, it might as well be healthy for you. Here you go. I yep. I don't I don't know. The difference between Benoit and Labushkin is there is a longer track record of Labushkin not being very good at this. Mm -hmm. Um I also look at his career and I go, Man, that guy's gotta get a better agent. He keeps playing for shitty teams. And then I look at his two point seven five million dollar contract and I'm like, mm, maybe he's got a good one. Uh, they need guys. They need guys desperately, and they need guys at this number because they want to carry three goalies lest they lose Martin Jones and then be stuck in a bad situation. And I don't even know if they have the space to like call up a Max Lajoie. They don't. It, currently, as of this morning, they're, they're one contract over the 23-man limit. I forgot to mention that in the video. I've never seen that before. Yeah, so what will happen is Giordano will go in LTIR. Yeah. That Very is easy fix. Yeah, that's a difficult one because, like, he got a head injury last night, mm -hmm. according to the Leafs. That's their words, not mine. How soon after an injury that doesn't involve like a broken bone can you put someone on LTIR? I I actually don't know the answer to that. Or can you put him on IR immediately? And then retroactively goes on LTIR. I think that's probably what yeah. You can put somebody on IR, and at any moment you can regroup and put them on LTIR. Like he's injured, we're not seeing him anytime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it's I think it's interesting that it's probably his last game because I don't know. Like uh, if they get to the playoffs, I might be. I didn't think Giordano had a fit in this lineup like since he's been out. Yeah, been playing well. And then you see what happens last night. I think it's about time to call it a career. It's so it's been a, it's been a like a really good one, and so it's not like tragic. It's not sad. He's played in the league for so long. He's the oldest player in the league, right? This year and um, last. and last year. And so it's but it's sad to see him go out like this. Well, I would like it. His father passes. He plays two games, gets injured in the second one, and that might be it. Yeah, it is brutal. I got. I, I'm hoping for this. The Leafs go on a deep playoff run. Mm. They get a couple injuries in the back end, and there's rumors like you CJ. Well, you know, Mark well, Giordano could come back. He's great. That's great. Yeah, Mark Giordano could come back, and then he comes out. Ah, ah. forty years old, and it's April, May, or May. Ah. If the Leafs and then, are, and then he the opener. If the Leafs are in the conference finals, I don't think Mark Giordano should be shoehorned into the lineup. I think they would have figured out their defense by then. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, who, I don't know. who are we taking out? Bush. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> well, if somebody was injured, that's what I'm sure, saying. Like, sure. But I agree with you, Jesse. Like, we <laughs> talked about this Monday, I think. It's like, yeah. okay, Giordano's back, and that's cool, but, like, defenses looked really good without him. And then, of course, you know, Sheldon goes and drafts, dresses six left D, <laughs> and it was unfortunately, and this is not his fault, they they used it on the broadcast as here's the issue that you have when you run into lefty like mm-hmm. this many lefty and uh, it was a Giordano pass backhand pass you in his really, own zone you really see it eh you do like, you, you really do notice it and and that. it's because the NHL is so quick and these players have no time and and somebody's all over you so yeah I think you gotta I I think. I think this eliminates that problem. It's good to have a right shot D in there. It is going to be hilarious once Lilligren is fully back uh, to see, you know, Lilligren and Brody and McCabe and Benoit and then Riley Labushkin, I think is going to be, Dude, it's going to be <laughs> awesome. Can we live with Riley Labushkin for a friggin' week? Yeah, I think I can. can. Be, yeah, I can be like able. literally a week. Like if they, if CJ is to be believed, which I don't know. No, he seems to be pretty knowledgeable. They're out there trying to get, Somebody else, somebody, not just else, somebody better, right? If that's the case, Riley and him and Riley and Labushkin are going to be paired together for what I think might be four games. We like, lived, like, I'm we not going to clutch my pearls over that. We dude. lived like, over, we lived, we lived without Riley, period. Yes. We, we'll be fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay. What if it's good? Like, assuming Lilligren comes back, good pair, good pair adequate pair <laughs> like that's better than what they've played the last two games with bad pair bad pair good pair it's just they they need someone so they need some human being at under league men last night um matthew nye scores the opening goal against the arizona coyotes gosh darn matthew nye <laughs> was born the same night of the last that time was never mentioned at all i know i'm just gonna throw it out one more time <laughs> Matthew Nye is born October 17th, 2002. That was the last time the Leafs beat the Coyotes at home. Do you want to know what happened? That's the last time the Leafs beat the Coyotes at home. Forget that Matthew Nye was born there and born on that day. The last time the Leafs had beat the Coyotes at home was October 17th, 2002. If you're a fan of another team and you think that you know pain, you don't. You don't. You don't know pain. You don't. You have no idea. This is why when I said earlier for Montreal Canadiens fans who were complaining, remember remember it went viral. People, I'm like, yeah, I don't feel bad for them. <laughs> why would I feel bad for you? You went to the finals in your lifetime. If you're my age, Montreal's been to the finals twice in my lifetime. They won a cup in 93, at least. Oh, that's right. I don't feel bad for anybody. Yeah. This Leafs team has been... That, that 2002 team was really, really good. They were good for a couple years after that, and then they were bad for 12 years, made the playoffs once. Once. And then, as a bad team. And then were bad again. <laughs> and yes. then have You can had, argue they were bad the whole time. And then have had seven or eight consecutive years of heartbreaking outs in the playoffs. And one second round appearance. I'm salty. I have the box score. Okay, please. From, from that game, October 17th, 2002. Uh, Leafs go uh, uh, out to a 2 nothing lead in the first period with a goal from Shane Corson and a power play goal from Thomas Caberle. Mm. Bringing the Coyotes within one with a power play marker. TSN broadcaster Mike Johnson. Leafs go up 4, or sorry, 3, 4, and 5-1 with goals from Robert Zvela, Darcy Tucker, and Shane Corson again. I loved Robert Zvela, by the way. He was great. He wore 67, which pissed me off. Right. And in the third period, the Coyotes get two goals from, yes, you guessed it, that def- mm-hmm. that offensive juggernaut, Paul Mara. I don't know where the hell that came from. This game featured Danny Briere, who is now the uh, uh, GM of the Flyers, Shane Doan, who is now in the Leafs' front office. Briere and Doan both minus two in that game. Bums. It featured a guy who uh, isn't in a front office. I just want to say his name. Dan Focht. His name is Dan Focht. Mike Johnson, like I said, was in that game. Claude Lemieux, who was on the Coyotes. I don't remember that, but he's now uh, a player agent. Uh, Tom Fitzgerald was on the Leafs. He's now the GM of the uh, New Jersey Devils. New Jersey Devils. Ty Domi, whose son is now on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Travis Green who is currently a free agent, uh, coach, and Matt Sundin, who has a statue outside the building the Leafs won in last night. (laughs) Absolutely astounding it was that long ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, game-winning goalie, 
Trevor Kid. Uh, how do we think of how do we feel about Joseph Wall last night, guys? Damn, he looked great. He had the Labushkin stuff not been going on. I would have talked way more about him uh, in the LFR. Um, he was moving really well, tracking pucks really well. Um, zero worries. Jesse, do you think that the Leafs could call goaltending a strength going into the playoffs? That's an interesting question. I I would say a strength in numbers for sure because I don't think three. I think I don't think a lot of teams have three NHL goalies that they can run out there at any moment. I think that was something that was really beneficial to the Vegas Golden Knights at the end of last year, where they could rotate through goalies and like Aiden, five. Aiden Hill started <laughs> the season as goalie like four and ends up winning the Stanley Cup for them. And now look at him go now. But I think just if they're able to hold on to Martin Jones, just strength in numbers for Leafs, like it's gonna. Uh, it's going to work out well for them. I, I like uh, I like the fact that they're going to try to go for it. What this does mean, though, is it's likely that because because right now uh, Connor Timmons is on IR, he can go down, but they would still be over, and they would have to waive him. Nick Robertson's the guy. Nick like, Robertson, uh, like it's it's you bring you bring back Jan Kroak and then um, you send down Nick Robertson, and then it doesn't matter after the trade deadline, right? Like it like a after the trade deadline, you could have as many people on your roster as you want, as long as it fits under the salary cap, which it won't. So well, with Unless, Giordano on IR, it might. Yeah. Well, so Giordano's going to go on IR. Timmons is probably going to come off of, and LTI you could wave IR. Timmons, and, and you can wave him. And he and makes a million down. one. Then Yarn Croak comes back. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of people are forgetting. Yeah, and people were like, oh, maybe they should just trade him. I'm like, do you not remember how useful Kelly Yarncroke is? That is just, just no. not going to happen. No. Yeah. Yarncroke is very I would be, useful. I'd bet money it's not going to happen. Well, and is it the worst thing for Nick Robertson to go sharpen up with the Marley, score a bunch of goals, and then by the playoffs, he's back in the... There's also probably a way you could probably squeeze it out where you don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. If they keep delaying Yarncroke coming back, you keep Robertson on the lineup, depending on what trades they make, if they need the roster spot in the next week then you have to send him down but if they don't and then you just give it a couple more days after trade deadline you probably fit nick on the robert uh roster nick on the robertson and the yes. roberts <laughs> interesting factor i've wondered about um there's been a little bit of noise with matt murray and he's like you know recovering he's on the no no, no wait mm-hmm. he's he's recovering um the leafs would never activate him from ltir because why on earth would they that doesn't make any sense. What if they're able to deal him? Like, what if they're able? No, to... apparently he's he's getting ready. The when all the rumors are happening, he's getting ready to play next season. Uh, and like, even if he'd be around, it's it's a next year's problem. Uh, you know? well, yeah. then I don't know. Listen, it's get creative time, yeah. and let's not forget what a week today is. The trade deadline. Yeah. So. Their situation right now is not going to be their situation in a week. If Matt Murray is your Martin Jones next year. Uh, third goalie in the minors. Do you care? Like he would have to sign like a league minimum. In. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a UFA like, at the end yeah. of this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I'm he would thinking, have to sign a new contract. I think yes. that the Leafs, though, going through what they went through, and I don't want to get too far ahead because who the hell cares about the off season right now? Um, but if he is your Martin Jones next year, you probably don't care. Uh, like that's and he's a he grew up a Leaf fan. He did play well when he has played here, right? 20 games he's played here have been good. You could do worse than that. You could do better than that. But, eh. I mean, everybody, listen, myself included, nobody expected Martin Jones to do what he did. As the guy who gets worked up about things for a living, I I can't bring myself to get worked up about the third goalie next season. Not yet. Yeah. Also, Not yet. 903 in 26 games. Not the greatest. Uh, 903 is like bang on league average. League Av. Take that. Not the greatest. Isn't that? Dude, when we started this show... League average was like nine ten. Yes, like nine eleven. Scoring's gone up. I think that's a relationship the Leafs would like to move on from. You think? I don't see. I just see that's not what I've heard. No, I've heard that that he's really favorable to the way that they've handled his medical situation. Because mm-hmm. the Leafs medical staff is actually really good. Best They're, in the biz. It used to be the worst in the biz. It is now one of the best, which is great. An easy thing to improve. Sure. Um, and he grew up a Leaf fan. He wants to be here. Uh, he wanted to be here before. Like I don't, I I don't see why the Leafs. I mean, obviously they they probably are not thrilled to be paying him that much to not play, but they didn't sign that deal. Um, and they did. 
Well, they traded for it. Yeah, they, <laughs> they they brought Matt Murray in to Kyle Dubas specifically brought him in to be the starting goaltender and compete with Ilya Samsonov, and he lost the competition. Dude, that man, if Ilya Samsonov had been tendered by the Caps, the Leafs would have been. Screwed. They wouldn't have made the playoffs. They'd have been screwed. They wouldn't have made the playoffs. Like Mrazic, you need a goalie. Mrazic Murray, holy moly. Uh, Wait, like he, just, no, Adam, it wouldn't have even been Mrazic. He already wasn't on the team. So it would have been Murray. Mrazic wasn't on the team at that point? No, they had, they traded him at the Montreal draft. Oh. So it would have been Murray and... F- oh, my God. Uh, Murray and... um. Oh, man. He played a bunch of games for the team. Swedish guy. What was his name? I already forget his name. What? Like goalie? Yeah. I already forget. That's how little. But I think Swedish goalie. I think Gustafsson because Jesse has the jersey. I do. (laughs) I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. Oh, uh, I know who you're talking about. You know who I'm talking about, right? Like 27, 28 now, but he was 25 at the time. Uh, What year are you? What What do you think? 21, 22, I think. Again, we get a pass for that. Yeah. Um, Do do I have to look it up? I'm looking it up. Yeah. He played games for the Leafs last year. I'm almost positive. Eric Schalgren. Yeah. Eric Schalgren. That's who <laughs> Eric Shell. No, it literally would have been Murray Shelgren. Oh my God! Who else would it have been? Uh, that Finnish goaltender that Coyotes the Coyotes claimed. <laughs> Fuck off! I can't <laughs> believe they did that. Yes, I can. No, okay. So last year the Leafs had playing in goal for them. Oh, you know what? Wool might have played games. Uh, it would have been. Yeah, he played seven. It was Jet Alexander. Remember mm-hmm. him, the university goalie, Joseph Wool, Ilya Samsonov, Eric Shelgren, Matt Murray, but. People forget, Wool took Shelgren's job. Wool was behind Shelgren. Yes. And he took it. Yes. Wool started half the playoffs last year. Well, not half, but like... Oh, he was uh, he was a good chunk of the last four half. Four games in yeah. the playoffs last year? He I want to say he played most of the Panthers series, yeah. yeah. I, and think he was I, think it's, I think it's four total he played, but um, yeah. Like, Wool was great. Imagine... Were, All the people. No, no. We're not doing this. We're not singing. No, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. What? It's Good Deeds Cup season. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. And I was going to say, imagine. All the people. Imagine there was a championship for being good to people. <laughs> yeah. Imagine. Oh. Right? I mean, I'm sure that's what John Lennon wanted when he sang that song, right? He wanted a chance. He's like, where is the cup? Is he going to sue us? <laughs> no, he's not. Okay. Uh, I, the Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup is back for its eighth season, empowering Canadian minor hockey teams to make a meaningful impact on their communities. I want to give you an example. 2019's West Carlton Warriors uh, from here in Ontario supported disaster relief efforts after a tornado through, to, tore through their hometown. Um, uh, the 2021 winner, I think we talked about this last time, the Victoria Admirals supported mm-hmm. the Children's Health Foundation of Vancouver Island to help more children with mental and physical challenges achieve their sports goals through specialized equipment. Now, it's $100,000 to a registered Canadian charity of your team's choice, and all you need to do, this is you, your friends, your family, record eligible good deeds posted on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or X using hashtag good deeds cup and hashtag contest, and then remember to tag at Chevrolet Canada and hashtag your team's name, and every single time a video is posted of a good deed being done, that adds to your total. And again, you get to be the Good Deeds Cup champion. Well, Adam, you know, some people might say that that's not realistic. And some Where's might say you're a dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you're not the only one. That's right. That's bad. That's right. It's really that's good, bad. actually. That's right. That was my That wasn't deed. worth it. No, it was mine. <laughs> Chevrolet Good Deeds good. Cup. So, Chris Tanev deal. Mm. Flames fans seem to be split on the return. Uh, listen, in the kindest way possible, not trying to be a jerk. There's a lot of copium there. It So here's... That trade sucks. Okay, why do you think it sucks? Uh, because, listen, if I was, <laughs> if I was told rumors of first round pick, first round pick, first round pick for ages and ages, that's what I would be expecting. That's what they fed the media, though. That's yeah. what they fed the media. That's what they. So CJ said it yesterday on the on the uh, uh, on the podcast. He said the ask was first round pick and a top prospect like an Easton Count. Nick Kiprios was talking about that on his show, saying, "Well, the Leafs should look at parting with him for somebody like that or a Lawson Kraus, which I completely disagree with. But it was it was something that's been talked about, and there was rumors, and CJ and Julian addressed this of a Toronto tax because 
Bradshaw Living left the Flames. The Flames didn't fire him. There might be some hurt feelings there. And really, really good way to do business. Well, again, and I tell, and I, I said this last episode, and people were like, "Well, you think you know the Flames, huh?" Invisible hand of of uh, Marie Edwards. Once you know, you'll see it everywhere. And I think, I think that there's a little bit of that because. Do you think Craig Conroy's upset that uh, um, that Brad Treliving resigned? No, he got a promotion. Yeah, who's I upset? Highly doubt it. Why would there be a Toronto tax then? Ownership. Who's upset about it? Ownership. That'd be the owner. Now. God, I'm fascinated. Like, wh- when is the next CJ show? When's he recording? Monday. He's also going to be... Oh, I um, can't wait. Yeah, he- he'll be floating around SDP next week, too. Because, yeah. you know, it's trade deadline. Week. He had one last week, too. Yeah. Or, sorry, uh, yesterday. Yeah, that's There's the one I'm episode. talking about. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, why, why I got to listen to it on the I way think home. the Tanev deal, like, you're mad at it? I'm not <laughs> mad at it. It's just I I was surprised that there wasn't a first involved. Now... You could talk yourself into this deal being two seconds, mm-hmm. and Which it's not. It, it it's is. not even. Yeah, it's not even a stretch, right? No. It's a second round pick that's an actual draft pick. And um, what's his first name? Artem. Artem Grushnikov. Um, <laughs> I got se- second round pick from twenty twenty one. Yep, I think you got it. Um, you know, I heard Jeff Merrick talking about him. He's not a point producer. He kind of sounds like a young Ilya Labushkin, um, but he he'll punish you. Can I? Right. So. Oh, go ahead. Can I just say that I heard the Jeff Merrick talk as well? What? And he's like talking. He's like, he's like, you know, the people I talked to one GM and he said he hits hard and he hits for keeps, which I really like the way Jeff phrased that. Mm-hmm. I play for keeps. And then they talked about some other things and he's he grinds, he does this, he does that. And and I'm I'm sitting there and I'm listening with my wife Natalie, who has so much hockey shoved in her face now that she's so she's super invested. Mm-hmm. And she's like, he didn't say he's good at hockey though. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's talking about this kid like he's good at hockey. So I, I reached out to Scott Wheeler about it. Yeah, but you know how silly it would sound if he was just like, oh, he's good at hockey. Yeah, I think he's describing well, the qualities of the player and you take those attributes. Here's what Scott said. Sure. Really smooth skater, good defensively, developing game with the puck, but not a strength. Projects to be a 6-7 if all goes well. He's like, he's number 10 on my star's prospects, probably somewhere between 11 and 15 on a Flames pool. Good. Mm. And and really, for a expiring thirty four year old defenseman with injury history who's been healthy lately, yes, fair. But I also think that that shows that the market that the Flames were trying to create for Chris Tanev just wasn't there. Yeah, and I think people are ignoring the context. Anybody who's un- like really unhappy with the deal, you're ignoring the context around it. They weren't gonna. They this was the price that everybody's willing to pay. It's a second. The clearly the first was, hey, this is what we want, but it's not available. He's a, he's a UFA. He's old. There's an injury history there where you got to try and make this deal before he gets injured. If you're not gonna hold him out of the lineup, and you got a prospect that they're very happy about because apparently the Flames have a lot of offensive defensemen in their system. They just want to supplant that with some guys who are more focused on defense, Nothing which they got. Nope. And a second round pick is still a second round pick, which is significant. Like I think it's a like it's nice work by Conroy. It's, I have no problem with it's it. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. Um you know, you're not gonna get a they have all these players available, and you're not gonna get a first rounder for all of them. Exactly. <laughs> and your first rounder is coming from Hannafin. Yeah, and and well, CJ, if they trade them, CJ was talking about how you can't leave everything to the last day because no. you can't yeah. be doing all of them on one day. You got to start. You got to make the deals, and they've been doing that the last couple of weeks. They've already sent out a couple of guys, and then now this is the next domino. And it, it wasn't going to wait till the eighth to do it. And yeah, I don't yeah. mind it at all. I, I will I, say this: I, I, there was some criticism at the time when the Flames traded Zadorov, and we were like, "Oh man, wait to the deadline. You're going to get this. You're going to get." Well, we already know that's probably not the case Mm -hmm. they weren't going to get all that and now we're a week ahead of the deadline they've traded tanev they've traded uh linholm they've traded zadorov and now who do they got left they've already they've basically taken markstrom off the market so you got hannafin and like who else are we really worried about like, I don't think Anderson's going to go. I don't think I would be very surprised. I've never understood those rumors. No. I've I was excited about them, mm-hmm. believe me. Um but I've I've never understood why Calgary if they if they don't want to go full rebuild, why would you trade that player? I don't right. understand. So you're looking at trading Hannafin and maybe Jordan Osterley 
you know. And like, I am not building my entire trade deadline plan around Jordan Osh. So, <laughs> so. no offense. Like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Now, <laughs> like, now Conroy's left for his last week. He has to deal Nona Hannafin. He's going to get a boatload because he's a very good player. And you get to focus on that. And the thing about the, the door off trade, it made sense because Vancouver was willing to pay the price that he set. Yeah. No, same with the Lindholm deal. Winnipeg was willing to pay the price. Mm-hmm. So just do it now instead of just waiting on the fingers crossed that you can get something more. Just and take the price. The the uh getting Sharon Govich. Um remember what I what I talked about? Like your number one priority has to be resurrecting the career of Jonathan Huberto. Mm-hmm. He's found his guy. Yeah. From within. It just took him a while. But here he is. He's been like a point of game player for at least a few dozen games uh, with Yeager uh, Sharon Govich. I like the uh, I, I have to say, I, I give credit to Craig Conroy, because if you go back to last summer, so far, he's done a, a, a relatively fair job. I, would I wouldn't say, say he's, he's done a good job. Fair, Yeah, a good job. Like moving off of the guys who didn't want to be there long term, although weirdly Toffoli did. Um, yeah, the, they the, just the Flames just didn't want to take his the the salary that he wanted. What tilts the scale to good for me is the return for Lindholm was ridiculous. Yeah, and and uh, I would say Sharon Govich has been a surprise. He's been a better player than most people would have projected him to be. Um, it seemed like a huge downgrade. Yeah, and I just don't it's not. think it's that big. To Foley, by the way, um, like I said, wanted to stay there. I wonder, I wonder if the Flames are doing some sort of quick retool if they don't revisit that because. He's going to be a UFA this summer. New Jersey's falling further and further out. They're probably going to trade him. I would love to see him back in a Vancouver Canucks jersey. I think we all would. So funny. Way more fun than Gensel. Not because Gensel isn't great, but I, I think Toffoli back in, in Vancouver colors would be great. That's the, that's the for the storylines alone, I want Toffoli to the Canucks. Feelings matter. Yeah. Like maybe he's, well, it, it's possible he's like, yeah, F you. <laughs> I don't want to come I back. I don't think so. It's a different management group. It's possible. Right? Just saying. So, uh, yeah. So, interesting. Speaking of that management group, it looks as though... Um, what is this all about? It looks as though the huh. Vancouver Canucks got pretty close to trading Elias Pettersson to the Carolina Hurricanes. you just want to mention the other side? Dallas? The, the, I oh, think, Dallas. I think it's Dallas did. Jim Nill did great work. Yeah. Like, we oh, say, yeah. We say Calgary, Calgary did a good job getting the assets they wanted, but... I think Dallas did an even better job, if you want to look at it, getting the exact guy that they want exactly. without giving up anything that they care about. No, dude, he uh, he fits the Dallas Stars like a glove. Ugh. I know. They're like, going to be ugly to play against. Dude, as soon as I heard where he was going, I'm like, that, that friggin' sucks. Here's <laughs> what I thought when I saw that. Edmonton's got to add more offense. Yeah. Vegas has got to add something, too. Like, if D- Dallas makes a move like that, it probably costs Vegas and Edmonton more than they were expecting. That's interesting. I think. That's I also think Colorado's got to make a move too, because especially Colorado, which is such an offensive based team, right? Mm-hmm. If and Dallas, which has been high scoring and, and less defensive since their Stanley Cup run, they still are pretty strong on defense. They're kind of punishing, and they're going to score a bunch now. Like they are, I would say Dallas looks a lot like the Colorado Avalanche team that won the Cup. Mm-hmm. Ooh, oh my God! Please send this to Drew. <laughs> He's gonna be mad. Don't let him hear that. He's, but he would even even he would admit Colorado has one extraordinarily effective line and a bu- and three others that really need a little bit of help. And their defense is still very good. What, yes. What I would say is Colorado um, won the cup with like a pretty mobile decor. Mm-hmm. Um, they had Josh Manson, who they were like, "You're our default uh, fight Patrick Maroon guy." Um, and everyone else, you just sort of skate around with the puck. Um, whereas I think Dallas is more emulating what Vegas did last year. They're uh, the defenders they have are huge. They are almost all of them are over six foot. There's some real heavy boys on there too. Something worth mentioning too. If you're Dallas and you're Jim Nil, hmm. and you find out who Colorado, who Edmonton, who Vancouver, or who the Golden Knights are in on, you have a first round pick this year and next year to say, why don't we block that trade and just take whoever they want? Because they do that. They do that from time to time. And so, like, teams do that. Shenanigannery. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the great thing about what Jim Nill pulled off is that first-round pick is is a Dallas Stars first-round pick. And if there's ever a year to get off your first-round pick for Dallas, this would be the one. I don't know where their weakness is. Like, what are you going to go get? Do you need a weakness or can you just give yourself a strength? 
Doesn't for, matter. For me right now with the Dallas Stars, what they've gotten out of uh, Logan Stankoven. Um, who if, they just loaned yeah, back they to They already got a trade deadline acquisition. <laughs> like it, Their own player. Dude's got four career NHL games. He's got four points, three goals, one assist. Five and foot two. He's literally like the, t- the two people uh, that are most hyped coming into the NHL right now are in the complete opposite uh, ends of the height spectrum. We got six yep. eight uh, Matt Rempe taking over the world, and then we got Logan, who's four eleven, just yeah. being the best center in the league. There's a there's a great uh, photo of Stankoven in a goal celebration circle, and I'm like, is he really short, or are the Dallas Stars huge? And it turned <laughs> out the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The answer is definitively yes. So the NHL is moving bigger again. Oh yeah, dude. I. I, I love these cycles on mm-hmm. the show years ago. The, the they're going little fast offense and the market inefficiency is going to become huge guys who can do stuff. That's the key. They got to be able to do stuff. The NHL moved off of huge guy who's uh, huge guys who can't do stuff. And then we I think we overcorrected because we thought all huge guys couldn't do stuff. Yes. Yes. Or the huge guys got better. Well, they did. The huge guys were like, okay, I can't just be huge. I got to be able to do ridiculous stuff. Um, And like, like, Quinton Byfield should not be able to do that shit. (laughs) Quinton Byfield should not be able. Tage Thompson last year. Man. He's hurt. He'll be back. Oh, yeah, Tage Thompson. There's a good one. He'll be back. He'll be back. Like, in growing up, they would have never allowed Tage Thompson to be. They'd be like, that's nice. You play defense. Yes. (laughs) That's great. Uh, like they would have nipped that in the bud when he was 12 years old. <laughs> yep. Hey, hey. Have you considered defense? Why are you practicing faceoffs? And you shoot right? Get back there. So there's Got there's it. two little plays that Stan Coven's had over the last couple of games that have been like really stood out uh, to all the hockey nerds. Um, and they, they're they're right to be so hyped about it, and I am as well. Uh, there's this one play against the the Jets where he comes into the zone, and you see how relentless he is as this little guy running around the ice. Here, Maddie, bring this off. I'll just play it Which one time. Which So I don't need to tell you who he is here. Right. So you're gonna you're gonna watch him enter the zone. You're gonna, gonna see know. this little bee buzz around at the top and just Wait, generate is, scoring chances. Sorry, is he that tiny Timbits <laughs> player at the blue line? W- watch this. So watch. Put this on the screen. <laughs> That's so oh, okay, there he is it. coming in. Look how quick he is. Comes through the top. Wyatt Johnson gets a shot on goal here. And watch him out front. <laughs> he's out, so he's just controlling the play. I don't know who he's up against here, but this is the screenshot we can we can pull. I think the Undertaker. <laughs> Look who he's battling <laughs> out in front. <laughs> To create this goal. Everybody on the ice is bigger than him. That's the thing. It's like he's out there. Every single person who plays hockey is bigger than him. But he's getting position against all of these big guys and creating a goal out in front. It's the garbage goal that you fight for in front of the net, except he's the tiniest human. And he's able to fight everybody for this goal. It's he impressive has stuff. It, with the Texas Stars this year, he has 57 points in 47 games. With the Dallas Stars, also in Texas, but not the Texas Stars. <laughs> mm. Three goals, one assist in four games. Uh, so he's got a point a game, and he, as I said this morning, he was loaned back to the Texas Stars. Was he? Yes. Ah. And, and the reason for that is because I think uh, the Chris Tanev thing, the, he, oh. he was the odd man out. What a yeah. crazy cup of coffee. Three yeah. goals in four games. Well, and he'll be back. Yeah. Uh, I, gave him a week. Yeah. I called him a center earlier, but he's been on the wing of the Wyatt Johnson, Jamie Ben line, and the three of them look just incredible together. Uh, I just wanted to say 47 points in 57 games like you said but he just turned 21 Mm -hmm. like to do that as a 20 year old in the a is really 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 friggin good yep this is great player man yeah great oh the dallas stars man and then pesky this uh this little pickpocket is the from the other angle is what is there any way to put it up on the screen look at this uh no i'm gonna freeze frame it and we're just gonna see the way he just giant he's taking down. Oof. Who's that enormous person? Can we put that up? Is that yeah, Morgan yeah. Barron? Put that put that one up there. He's so little. <laughs> oh my gosh. Comes out of nowhere, right from behind, pickpockets the puck, turns it around, creates a little scoring chance for John, uh, Wyatt Johnson out front. No. It's he got fabulous him. stuff. Got I forget where gloves. I was going next. Got him in the gloves. Do you guys minutes? know? You're going to Vancouver. Ah, but then yes. I because I, I want to talk about the other side of the trade too. Yeah, yeah. Uh Pedersen to Carolina almost happened. And it has apparently triggered um, 
Pedersen to say, you know what? I will talk extension. Now, because uh, he didn't want to negotiate in season. And I, I, I'm obviously, how would you want to leave this Vancouver Canucks team that's looking so good, right? This might be the story of the deadline. That if he resigns. Now, well, there has been movement in that they're talking, but I think the way it was framed was that, that there was a deal imminent. And from what we know, there isn't thus far, but that can change. That if it, One phone call can change that. I The Canucks have been in first place basically the entire year. They're good. They're a good hockey team. Um, they have been playing their worst hockey and mm -hmm. getting their worst results of the season. And this story is looming, and this story is big. And I think, I think, I mean, obviously every insider is going to latch onto it on account of uh, what the hell else are you going to talk about all week, right? There's only so many times you can mention Noah Hannafin, right? I, I always think the trade deadline is is busy and exciting no matter what, uh, even if you take out the big names. But this is going to be a big story. And if they're not going to sign him before the trade deadline, what the hell was the point of all this? I mean, I think I think there's a benefit to the Vancouver Canucks here. Uh, they get to um, they get to tell their fans, "Hey, we're on it," mm -hmm. and I think that's a big thing. I if it were if it were Austin Matthews, I'd be just as worried here in Toronto. Uh, I think the other thing is they if they are going to trade him, and I think that's pretty remote at this point. If they are going to trade him, his price just went up because we're already talking to him about an extension. And his, I wonder his trade price or his contract his trade price, price. Okay. His trade price. And I, I wonder what that deal would have looked like. No one seems to know. Uh, However, Marty Nietzsche uh, is like the rumored centerpiece. He's pretty good. I he's saw not, a few people say Sebastian Ajo and uh, I don't think so. I know it's been legal in Canada for several years, but maybe layoff. Not a chance. I think uh, I think it's interesting, though. What, what is going to be interesting for me is the term. Vancouver, I, I think the split here is going to come down to maybe not the money in, but we talked last episode about what if he just took a three-year deal? He'd only be 28. Oh, I think that's it. what's going to happen. I think, but I think the reason that they were unable to get the deal done before is because Vancouver's like, no, eight. And he was like, no. Well, he's at an awkward age. Um, he's 26, right? 25. 25. So if he signs an eight-year deal that takes him to 33, what kind of contract are you going to get at 33? Exactly. No, uh, sign... I mean, th he's probably thinking three. Mm -hmm. The Canucks are probably thinking, please get serious. Um, so I think... But it would be awkward if he signs a four-year deal because that takes him to 29. Awkward for him. 29 is okay. You're not going to get an eight-year deal at 29, are you? You bet your ass you Awkward are. for him or for awkward for the Canucks? Awkward for him. Uh, okay. th both. Both. Like, listen, your stock goes down on the back nine. Mm-hmm. It, it just does. That's the life of a professional athlete. Um, I I think the eight-year deal it expires beyond 30. So if this next contract takes him to 30 years old, he has a chance of getting an eight-year deal. Um, but then beyond that, like, ugh. no, like uh, when Matthews signed his five-year deal, you know, everyone talked about, why the hell would the Leafs do that? Uh, but we know exactly why Matthews would do that. It's following the more NBA style model of, well, it's a salary cap league. The cap is going up. So I'm going to sign short term, mm -hmm. continue to play well, short term, bigger money, short term, bigger money. LeBron signs like, how many contracts has LeBron signed in his career? A lot, a lot. Is it double digits? It's like, like every. It's like every year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You want to be signing as many contracts as you can because the salary cap keeps going up. So you want to take advantage of the higher salary cap because you get a higher percentage. Yeah, and like you know, a player like William Nylander. Hey, well, why would I sign eight years? You're going to give me how much? Tell you what, <laughs> let me sign on that dotted line. That contract's going to cover any bump you would get under the salary cap. Ninety-two million dollars. <laughs> eh, I'll make it work. Yeah. We're, and Pedersen, I think, can ask for more than that. Um, and, you know, if he signs for... He could sign like 11 times three. And I really don't think any Canucks fan should complain about that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's three years. Yep. 11 a lot less than a player like Pedersen should be making uh, as a free agent, in my opinion. Um, well, what about after three years? Well, 
how bad, how much will you care if you win the Stanley Cup this year? Yeah, it's it's not about the uh, with these negotiations. I hate that kind of thinking when you're like, yeah. what about eight years from now when that contract expires? I'm like, well, what if we win? The Canucks haven't had a chance to win the Cup this good in 13 years. To quote Dave Nonis, who cares about the last three years of this deal? <laughs> <laughs> who cares about the last three years of this three-year deal? The sage, yeah. Dave Nonis. Um, you just need an answer, I think. Yeah, can, I, I do don't you think, think you need an answer in season, though. Do you think you the don't. public pressure is the only reason that they start negotiating again? Yes. The fact that it's been a media storm in Vancouver around this contract is the reason that Patterson's like, okay, I guess you can talk to my agent. I'm, I'm guessing... I'm guessing this is starting to interfere with their trade deadline plans because you got to plan for the future. And how the hell do you do that when like one of the cornerstones of your franchise, you have no idea. Can't commit. Yeah. Yeah. Like you need an answer there. So, you know, his power move was I'm not negotiating in season and I'm simply going to get ridiculous stats. Uh, and the Canucks power move was, I, I will say this. Mm. I believe Elias Pettersson a lot more than I believe the Vancouver Canucks. I believe Pedersen's willingness to wait and Pedersen's willingness to leave, they're not trading them to the Hurricanes. Yeah. I don't think that's <laughs> I don't I think that's an enormous bluff. I, I don't think like that was gonna happen in this season. Like I think even maybe, in the off season. Maybe you're starting a conversation for say it just went sideways the negotiations and you need a trade partner in August. But it's not happening anytime soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, we don't have Elias Pettersson, but we do have Yasperi Kakaniemi. Get out of my face. <laughs> that's that's not happening. And that's Frederick happening. Anderson. And for, yeah. Then like, we sent Demko back the other way. And yeah. Quinn Hughes. Yeah. Just, Why not? Why just, stop there? Just give them all to Carolina. You know, I, I I just I just I don't I just don't believe that. And like the fact that like when when Freed's dropped it the other day, I was like, but oh, no, okay, okay, back up, back up. You need to. Don't present that to me like I'm supposed to already know what you're talking about. That's brand new information. Right. I uh, I just I I believe that calls were made. I I believe all that is genuine. Do I believe they were ever going to pull the trigger on it? No, not a chance. Interesting. I wonder how Carolina feels about that because, in a sense, you've just used them as a negotiation ploy. I think they think they're getting to the front of the line if there's anything that goes wrong. Uh you know. There's nothing wrong with having a conversation. Yeah. If you're in an NHL front office, I'll mm -hmm. ask the question I always ask. What do you do all day? This it, stuff like this? Yeah. Like, it. you know, is it a waste of time? Like, I, I think it's an interesting thought exercise. Mm -hmm. And in the process of talking about Pedersen, I'm sure you talked about a bunch of other stuff. And who knows? Maybe you got some useful information. I don't know. If I'm the owner of the Carolina Hurricanes and I got all this money and I own a bunch of private jets and I say, hey, I'm going to fund whatever political party I want. And then I hear my GM doesn't make a phone call to Vancouver and Elias Pettersson might be on the block. I'm upset. Oh, if you I'm, I'm pissed off chance. if you don't just call call Jim Rutherford up or Patrick Alvey and be like, "Hey, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. How can I get better?" Do the Canucks, or sorry, not the Canucks? Do the Hurricanes have a as good as they are? Do they have a player as good as Elias Patterson? Uh, it's close. I don't think Aho's pretty. Good. Aho's pretty close. Aho's pretty good. He's, he's pretty, pretty damn good. He's pretty close. He's not Patterson. He's pretty close. He's on a friggin' wicked deal. Bergevin did them a huge favor, um, but mm -mm. like you got it. If someone calls you with that, even though you know it's a bluff, you got to listen. You got to talk. But I don't think the Canucks on their end of it were ever going to do anything. What are you going to do? Go scout uh, like another game? Like <laughs> have a conversation? <laughs> like go talk to another GM? Yeah, let's go scout Elias Pettersson. I don't know his game. Also, I want to know why Carolina. I feel like Rutherford called his own stomping grounds going, hey, just in case, if we did do a deal, what would that look like? Because if it had been widely known that Elias Pettersson was available, if you're any team in the league, you make that call, don't you? Uh, the Canucks, uh, the, I keep saying the Canucks, the Hurricanes, maybe more than any other team in the league. I'm like, that's a team that does their job. That's a team that makes phone calls. That's a team that tries things. They do call. They do make calls. Yeah, like they they just seem to be in on everything. They're one of the busiest front offices out there. Um, so that that's why Carolina. Mm -hmm. And maybe you trust Carolina 
uh, to shut up about it. That's e- exactly. I think there's maybe that. But I also think part of the reason I, I was thinking about the Pedersen thing, Carolina has had spectacular success in signing guys to deals that are, you know, 5 10% below market. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Pedersen was thinking, well, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I, I I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not bending on this. And then all they'd have to do is qualify him. And they have him for the next year, right? Or, I mean, he could sit, but I don't think that would help his, his, his you know. In a year, he'll be a UFA. Nothing's changing that, right? So Carolina can make that deal. And he can do the exact same thing to them that he's done to the Canucks, except this time it's higher stakes because he's a UFA instead of an RFA. But he wouldn't sit next season, is my point. No, I no. think any deal that any team would make for Elias Pettersson would come with an extension. You're you're not you're doing a bad job if you don't get an extension with the deal. They I, hadn't they hadn't received permission to talk to his agent though about that. Who? Carolina. Yeah, because the deal wasn't real. Like I think I think we got to be a lot further down the Vancouver is going to trade Pedersen train than the, to get to the point where the other team's talking about an extension. Because if they're actually serious about trading him, let's say uh, going into next year or something, because he doesn't want to be there, then you let teams talk to him. Then you get the sun and the moon for him because you can move him with the extension. I right. I'm I'm going to put this out there that I think this came from the Canucks um, because. Well, like, what's the incentive for the Hurricanes? To, so we were in on this. We were unsuccessful. And now all our players are like, was it us? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. This, this is a shitty day for the Carolina Hurricanes. Oh, yeah. They're mad. Yeah. They got to be mad today. The Canucks, well, that's what I was thinking. Like, maybe not so much. Like, wouldn't you be mad if you were thinking that maybe that's a possibility and then you were negotiated, to, you know, you were used as a pawn? I don't know. I don't know. I uh, It's always fun to think about where the leaks come from. Like, Friedman goes and, he, and he writes this little this little blurb on, on .ca about, hey, the Hurricanes had this deal. And it's like, okay, this sounds like the Canucks told him or somebody within that organization told him, hey, this thing happened with, with the Hurricanes. Go write this, and then Pedersen looks bad because he doesn't want to talk, and now it's, for, face, uh, it's forcing Vancouver's hand. Now his agent gets to go back to Vancouver and be like, what the hell? Let's talk. I don't want to get traded. All this kind of stuff. So if, if it all adds up and it points to one place, I think that's we know where it came from. It'll yeah. be brilliant if it works. Mm-hmm. It uh, might work. The Calgary Flames, I, I do want to go back to them quickly because it's it's now it's out there that the Flames are going to hang on to Markstrom because they don't want to send the wrong message. Uh, yeah. Do you agree with that? They uh, have played well of late. Been on a win streak. Yeah, he's, he's not a UFA. Like, there's no rush to Whoa. trade Markstrom. Whoa. Well, Jesse, that's a great point. Adam, what the hell did you just say? They don't want to send the wrong message? No, no. After that, they've been playing well? Hmm. Gasp? <laughs> you're finally you're finally I mean, on on the flames train oh i'm not i'm not like listen that's what i said there's the haves and the have nots in the western show. conference there is yeah but no if i was if i was out here denying that they won they went on like a five game winning streak would i no that would be super disingenuous they like do, they are not on a five game winning streak they have that did not happen in the last week they are still seven points behind the nashville predators how have they lost ground <laughs> well, because the Preds have been good, they've been they've played two less games than the Preds, but that still doesn't make up for God. That's so like that's, I feel bad for them. I mean, uh, yes, they're seven three and zero in their last ten, but the team they're facing or that they're playing is the the team that didn't get to see you two eight two and zero. <laughs> so, to me, a Markstrom deal only makes sense if you get a goalie back, because your long term plan with Dustin Wolf is obviously to not rush him. Sure. Right. Um, So uh, if you're completely pulling the rug on that situation, what are you doing? And like looking at some of the trades that have been made already, I don't think you're going to get a very good price for them anyway. Just hold on to them. Yeah, Yeah. I don't I don't understand. There's, There's no urgency to move them. No. Yeah. Also, you did the thing again, Adam. They're on a four game winning streak, not a five game winning. Oh, Shoot. Sorry. Way to go, stupid idiot. What a big, dumb Two episodes idiot. in a row. The Nashville Predators have won seven straight, by the way. So the YouTube Man. thing obviously worked. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. 
take things away Man. from equipment managers. <laughs> Deprive them of experiences. <laughs> Well, we all know that a team who plays in Nashville will never get a chance to see a concert. <laughs> Could never have fun again. No. I think the only place that would be more fun that would like interest somebody from Nashville is Vegas. Like, where else are you going to go where things are better for entertainment? <laughs> okay. Like, you got to be spoiled in Nashville. Right? Nashville feels like a real place on earth. I think that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vegas is alien. Yeah. yeah, no. Whenever I go to Vegas, I feel like a like a like I'm from a visiting planet. I get it. The it's Tennessee odd. Titans are building a new stadium, and they're doing the most Nashville thing ever. By on top of it, they're building the world's largest rooftop bar. On top of, I love that. <laughs> I'm like, I love that. <laughs> There's yes. never been anything more Nashville than that. <laughs> oh man, do you remember standing on the uh, on the on the Green Monster uh, in Boston and having drinks? It was freezing cold. But do you guys remember doing that when we went down with the? Leaders? We weren't on top of the Green Monster. Oh, we were, the other we were side. on the other side. No, no, yeah. other, other. We were we were by Pesky's Pole. That's it. I've been on top of the Green Monster. It was. I haven't. That was so much fun. Just sit, sitting out there in the outfield, drinking beers. Oh yeah. That was amazing. What's better than drinking beers? With Every the building that down there in Nashville has a rooftop bar. Like, do you remember walking down that strip? Just every single building, you're like, oh, there's people up there. They just literally removed the roof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 50 Preds jerseys, six girls all wearing green. 50 Preds jerseys, six girls all wearing purple. <laughs> oh, because they're... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, it it is the bet. Nashville Predators and Bachelorette capital of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so it's perfect that you you build your new football stadium, stadium and you break that world record. It's going to be cool. That is cool. Yeah. I want to go to that. Yeah, yeah me too. I would love to see a Titans game. I feel like that would be a fun experience. Me too. I need to wear my Eddie George jersey. <laughs> oh, I hope you still have it. Of course I do. Oh, that's incredible. Um, uh, I just want to throw this out there too. Uh, this is the kind of impact that this player has made. Um... And I'm going to send this text over to Jesse. Throw that up on the thingy. Uh, on the because because this is so this is a picture. Johnny Lazarus put this out there. It's a picture of the NHL store in New York. Okay, so this mm -hmm. is the head office merch store. Whose jersey? Get out of here! Do you see <laughs> Matt friggin' Rempy? Seventy three. Played what, he's, what six games now in the NHL? Do the playing the Leafs Saturday night. Do the New York Rangers have the biggest numbers in the league, or do the Blue Jackets have the smallest? You Look at what? that. That's a good point. Fantilli, 11. Rempy, 73! Now, let me ask That's you. That's what those jerseys say. Let me ask you guys a question. Yes. Look at ask. Matt Rempy's jersey. Look at the numbers. Look at, all, look at how great that is. The stitching, everything looks great. Mm. Isn't it next year that Fanatics takes over? Uh, so are all of those things going to shrink? That's what I instantly thought because of the baseball thing, right? Dude, those baseball jerseys are shocking. Yeah, you won't see you won't see a change to NHL jerseys uh, for the first few years initially because they bought out the Quebec factory that Adidas currently makes those jerseys in. So for the first at least a year, uh, the jerseys just be copy and repeat from what Adidas did. Uh, and so it'll, the jerseys will remain the same. It'll just be over time as they develop their own um, jerseys. It'll be they'll, we'll see the changes. Uh, that's a that's a risky purchase. I mean, it is Matt Rempe, but there's the name is a good investment. The number's tough. Seventy three. There was uh, there was an NHL player I used to have on Facebook, and uh, he his profile picture was him in a preseason game. And his number was 56. That's a preseason ass number. Yeah, and, it sure is. Well, that's, not it, a, that's not a number. <laughs> he, he had a teammate chirp him 56. Wow, you must be sticking to the team. <laughs> <laughs> he did not make the team. No, that's a number you wear when uh, you're going back down. <laughs> 73. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, no. uh, Ryan don't know. Reeves had a great fight last <laughs> night um, and definitely won it. Uh, against Liam O'Brien. Liam O'Brien's a tough nut, too. Yeah, he yeah. is. Yeah. Do you think, and I I, I hope the answer is no, like Reeves and Rempe don't go head-to-head -head on Saturday, Oh, right? just put them in the opening face-off. Yeah. I just don't... Just put them in. I don't want Rempe to fight anymore. Like, I, I that's too much fighting. Nah, you gotta fight Reeves, though. He, that's like, that's Bowser. Like, listen, you gotta, you gotta oh, kill all the bosses. You're both dead correct. I'm worried about the guy. Yeah, yeah. both of us can be right. He fights too much... For the player this player is trying to be, 
he's got to go Ryan Reeves. Now, if I will Princess say... Princess Peach is in the castle and Bowser's standing out there and he's just going to turn around and leave? Like, th- yeah. come on. There's not much reason for... Princess, Maddie said, who's Princess Peach? Princess Peach is winning. You know? you Yeah. 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 Could you not let Luigi take this She's one? an Nintendo <laughs> character. No one else. Yeah, I know. She's <laughs> a Nintendo character. Maddie. No, I'm kidding. Could, you not, could it not be Luigi's Haunted Mansion or something where he's the main character? Can no. someone else be? No. The guy? Do you know what I'm <laughs> who saying? Who do you want to step up? I don't know. I don't know on the Rangers who could step up. Adam's I like guess. Panarin better fight Reed. Like that would be a fight I would not enjoy watching the two of them. And I bet it'll be great. But I just ah, I'm worried about this guy. You saw his face. Yeah, you're Both worried about Both of his him. eyeballs are like swollen up, and he's yeah. But then what if he cold cocks Ryan Reeves at mm-hmm. center ice, and all of a sudden that is his flag in the sand? There's a new sheriff in town. Yeah, fight. It's Toronto? A, is you it knock, in Toronto or is it in New York? Are they in New York? Oh, no. Like you that? know what? It is in Toronto. Right. Yeah. So um, you knock out Ryan Reeves in Toronto on Saturday night. Hockey night in Canada. It's it's so bad when the team tough guy gets knocked out. It has. I, I'm trying to think of the last time it happened here. And the number I'm coming up with or the incident I'm coming up with, Domi, Ty Domi, went through everybody for over a decade. <laughs> and then you know who finally got him? Brian McGratton. Oh, Brian McGratton was huge. He, he was in a senator? Was huge. He was terrifying looking. He looked like a fire hydrant with a beard. And he he laid Ty Domi out. And like the whole building is like, oh. Yeah. That's our guy. Well, it was like when Colt Nora laid out George Paris. Yeah, Jesse's got the fight out right October twenty ninth, two thousand five. Uh Brian McGratton, Ty Domi. And like Do- Domi's hanging in there. ACC. But he is beating the shit out of that old man. And at the time, like for a pro- <laughs> for a professional athlete, he was an old man. Oof! Uh oh. Uh oh. That was an uppercut. And like you don't you never see Domi like that at the end of a fight. Ty Domi. Oh, my God. Maddie, Just that there's, little... there's a screenshot there, Maddie, if you want to throw it up. Oof. I mean, McGratton was so friggin' big. He was Eek. so friggin' big and so friggin' scary for so friggin' long. It's rare you. It's rare in these NHL fights you see a punch connect like that. Oh. Like, that's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's... Well, and that's the risk. And that's why if you're Reeves and you do pretty well in a fight against a guy like Liam O'Brien, you flex your muscle to the crowd and... Like he even he wasn't even supposed to go to the penalty box, but he like turned to the hard cam <laughs> like it was friggin' wrestling, <laughs> you know. Like I know the main broadcast cam is over there. I'm gonna point. Oh, I gotta go. All right, I'm heading. The back. ref spun him around, walked him off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he knew. Yeah, he knew. Liam O'Brien didn't seem to know, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's. They're, a- they're fighting. Are they fighting? They're fighting. Maybe. Ah, Who knows? Ah, ah. Okay. All right. Either way, we gotta be good with it. Oh. We haven't seen a fight between two players who have never played each other <laughs> this obvious in a long time. What are you talking about? He just did it four times. No, no. <laughs> like, a f- like, it's several days before the game. These mm. two have never played each other, never interacted. And we're like, yeah, they're gone. Mm. Like, I, the opening face off? You get it out of the way? I, I don't think those two people are going to be in the opening lineup. But yeah, but... First period. First period. First period for sure. Um uh I have a question for you guys. I might have since been. I mentioned to George Peros, who's had the most in person hearings? Which team has had the most in person hearings in the George Peros area? Toronto Maple Leafs. Leafs. Yeah. <laughs> Known for their violence. <laughs> who's had the most suspended games in the George Peros era? Toronto Maple Leafs. <sighs> okay. Not Toronto. Does, does Shane Pinto's Suspension count. No, because that wasn't a on ice to player. Okay. So that's player 41 safety. games. It's yeah. Like, it's, it's not the Leafs. It's not the Leafs. There was a 20 game suspension and it's not the Flames. Capitals? Capitals. Tom Wilson. Tom Wilson. Basically, 20 games. Exclusively him. The Leafs are second. The number of total suspensions, so not game suspensions, just total suspensions, Leafs. is Leafs. Isn't that crazy? The Leafs have been suspended the most times since George Peros took over. Mm. The soft Leafs suspended the most times. Where's NHL head offices in Toronto? 
Oh, well, George is in the New league York. is rigged for Toronto. People got to shut the fuck up. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Um, Why okay. Did you bring that up. I brought it up because I brought up George Peros, and I remember that I was going to get that stat out a couple of shows ago, and I thought this is meant, this is worth mentioning. Yeah, because I saw those when the Riley suspensions came down. Yeah, yeah. Jeff Fayette had it out, and yeah, I was yeah. like, you know what? That is interesting. Well, you know, in his defense, the Leafs employed Nazem Kadri for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's interesting is when you look at the 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 columns that Jeff puts together, one of the suspensions is for six plus. <laughs> Because that was Jeez. the Nazem Kadri suspension. Yeah, if you take out the if you take out every Nas suspension, where are the Leafs like last? Yeah. Well, Kadri yeah. did. He got Spets on that's it. Kadri did hit a downed opponent, which was illegal until Nick Cousins did it. Um, right, and then it wasn't. That illegal. was his big uh, mistake. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> like that. Hey, should we do the press conference? Let's do it. Let's do it. The presser. S D P. The Steve Dangle press conference. Timothy Lilligren not participating in practice. Giordano, not surprising, is also not. There. <sighs> Just throwing that out there. That's why they got Lubushkin. What's uh? Nobody knows Lilligren's timeline, right? No. It doesn't it doesn't seem long? But who the hell knows? That's yeah. There are. I, I would hazard a guess there are guys playing who, in an ideal world, wouldn't be. Jake McKay being one of them. That not a game goes by where that guy does not get. Smashed directly in the nose. <laughs> I think Mike Johnson said, "Just put a cage on for a month and be done with it," because he keeps he keeps getting hit, and then the visor keeps hitting him in the same spot, and he keeps bleeding. M- McCabe is an appropriate name because his nose looks like a map of Scotland. It's, it's crazy. It's tough. <laughs> crazy. This is from Congo Red for Adam. Mm. If you could pick Leo's career path, NHL career path, based entirely off of a previous player's. Who would you choose? And then for Steve, whose player path would you choose for Everly? Oh, I like that. Wait, Adam has to choose Leo's career Leo's path? Leo's NHL career path, and you got to do Everly's based on a previous player. Got it. Hmm. And it has to be a player. Tricky. Mm-hmm. Tricky. That's a good one, because you want a story, right? I want Leo I want Leo to sell the movie rights to his, to his story, right? I want there to be like, we're making a... a documentary about what? how great this player was john scott no no <laughs> okay no 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 i've, I've met him I why do you all know. instantly both of you instantly go to a bad place i'm trying to f- well you said movie. Movie. who else has yeah. a movie how many nhl movies are made about nhl stars we got we got uh we got herb brooks in uh in miracle on ice we got mystery alaska we got the mighty ducks D3. we got the mighty ducks d1 d2 yeah. d3 no yeah like, we got great, lots Adam. of high. we got young blood in the 80s with rob lowe we got shorzy like, shorzy there's tons of great <laughs> hockey movies don't tell me they're not uh there's tons of wayne gretzky documentaries come on leo better never forget to call his parents that's all i'm saying mm. Mm. see there's got to be in any great story there's got to be a little bit of there's got to be something to overcome. I have an answer for Everly. Okay, go. Okay, so in my head, I was like, I got to pick a man because she can be a woman who has a man's career path. Who cares? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, Haley Wickenheiser's a gold medalist and a doctor. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> and and played in a men's league in Europe, too. She, yeah. Like, what a. Haley Wickenheiser has lived one of the most ridiculous lives in the history of hockey. Yeah. One of the most ridiculous lives in the history of humanity. Like, there are not many people who are in the conversation to be on money. Mm-hmm. Sh- Haley Wickenheiser she probably be. ought to be. Yeah, just like, uh, uh, who's the astronaut? I keep for- I always forget his name. Oh, Chris Hadfield. Yeah, there's another person that it's like, do you ever stop? Like, do you ever oh. stop achieving? Like, how do you achieve at that level for that long doing that many things? Yeah, you know you're a jerk for being able to play the guitar, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to be able to. Where did Where, where did you find the time? Exactly. Exactly. Probably took you no time because you're really smart. So I'm going to say Haley Wickenheim. Okay. So I would say that's a good one. I like that. I'm going to say one that's that's um, that might surprise you, but there's a reason. Steve Eiserman. Okay. Now the reason I say Steve Eiserman is that Steve Eiserman was like the youngest captain in, captain in NHL history. Mm-hmm. Nineteen. Right. Yeah. And there was and the t- Detroit Red Wings nickname in the '80s was the Dead Wings. Yes. They were terrible. Mm. But who who brought them to fame? Really, truly brought them back is Stevie Eiserman. Yes, and I want 
I want Leo to have a, an arc like that where he is the first piece of a Stanley Cup champion right. eventually, like one of the greatest teams we've seen in the modern era. For it to be a great story, he's got to start low. He's got to start low. That's he my point. Can't start high. And and then and also gold medal. And then he goes, he builds the Dynasty Lightning, but then leaves before they even win. Doesn't get his ring. And But then goes back to his, his original team, whoever they are. And is so and, humble that when he gives a speech, refusing to take credit for his own work, the crowd groans. Yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the yes. whole crowd oh. in Detroit went, oh, Stevie. <laughs> I think, and, and to be as beloved as, because like Wayne Gretzky was great. Mario Lemieux was was great. Like there's a love that Detroit, Detroit fans have for Steve Eiserman that I think is different. If I'm not mistaken, Steve Eiserman holds the record for all-time scoring among players who played their entire career with one team. Wow. Crosby's got a shot at it. Oh, he should get it, I think. Unless he goes to Colorado. Um. (laughs) Stop. What? 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 I didn't say anything. I think Stevie Eisenman would be... It'd be sick. And the thing about Steve Eisenman, too, is that he has a little bit of he had a little bit of the, the Michael Jordan when he was younger in the sense that Michael was like a scoring machine. And so was Steve Eisenman. Unbatched. And Michael had a head coach, a legend, Phil Jackson, come in and say, you're going to score less. Mm-hmm. We're going to win more. Mm-hmm. And that's what Scotty Bowman told Steve Eisenman. You're going to have to do these roles that are less fun. Other people are going to score some more than you do. But we're going to win. And that's what they did. Eisenman wears glasses. Leo wears glasses. The only thing I would want for Leo uh, is better knees. Yeah. Yeah, but that, I mean, listen, there are going to be some injuries. No, I know. But when when you're like, okay, he's got to follow a career path. And I'm I'm a father. So I'm like, all right, who's a player who like never got hurt? <laughs> I just want him to be safe. <laughs> I just want I like my that. baby boy to be safe. I like that. I like that. So that's who I'm saying. That's who I'm saying. Young leader who's there forever. And there's that picture, you know, this picture of Steve Eisman. And if you want to Google it, Steve Eisman hugging the cup, missing a tooth. Do you not see that for Leo? 97. Right? Absolute oh. warrior. God, I would love that. Oh, and then, oh. He, and then he brings it, brings the cup back to Whitby. No, we would. Okay. <laughs> Whitby Ajax. This is very silly. Okay. I would want Leo's day with the cup to feature the Black Dog Pub. Okay. Scarborough. Have you considered that it's not up to you? <laughs> no, I haven't. Okay, just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out I there. I haven't. Okay. But uh, for those of you who don't know, that is a place in Scarborough where the cup has been two or three times. Steve Eiserman's last season in the NHL, talking about a guy who makes sacrifices, still had 34 points in 61 games. Babs had his ice time down to 1246. Damn. I bet he loved him. Oh, I bet they got along like a house on fire. And you could see the points drop off, too. So at the end of the uh, 92-93, Eisenman has 173, 137 points in 84 games. And then there's the lockout shortened year, 82, goal, or 82 points in 58. Or sorry, the next game. Sorry, he had an injury shortened year, but his point total never crosses 100 again. And that's because there's more of a team game in Detroit. What and was I like the final that. season? Was it 03 04? Uh, 05 06. Oh, it was 05 06. There were, there were a bunch of players who might have retired after 04 05, but they were locked out for an entire year. Yeah. They're like, dude, I can't go out like that. Yep. Yep. Jesse? Both games played with one franchise in NHL history. Nick Lidstrom's at the very top. Alex. What? Alex. D- what? Alex, uh, another Red, Red Wing. Del Vecchio. Del Vecchio? No, I thought you were going to do it Italian. Oh, Del Vecchio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's you. what I thought you were going for, but I'm like, surely it's not just that he's Italian. I want you to say <laughs> it Italian. <laughs> Del Vecchio. Thank you. Yeah. And then Shane Doan, Steve Eisenman's number four. Number 11 on that list, uh, Ken Danico. That's great, Jesse. Thank you for bringing <laughs> that clip up. Thank you for bringing up that excellent stat. That stat is brought to you by the New Jersey State Lottery. <laughs> Remember, anything can happen in Jersey. <laughs> do you think Ken Danico knows that you do the Ken Danico? He does. We've DM'd before. Have you DM'd? Does he like about it? it? I don't know. <laughs> I think. Can we bring him on? By the fact that I'm still alive, I think it means 
He at very least does not disapprove. That does not mean he approved. Have you seen the, this is old, but have you seen the uh, Jimmy Fallon Mick Jagger where he, Jimmy Fallon is Mick Jagger, but in the mirror? Yeah. Have you seen oh, that? Oh, yeah. no, no. I'm it's doing actually, John Mulaney. Yes. It's Jimmy yes. Fallon, but funny. Yes. And, yes, yes. Uh, and I think, I think you doing that with Ken Danico would be amazing. <laughs> I would love to do that. I'd love, I'd love. Danico v. Danico. To, I would love to be on a panel where you're like, Ken, you know, you were part of those amazing Devils teams. You know, what was it like, uh, you know, winning your your team's first ever cup in 1995? And right before he starts to answer, I go, that's a great question, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> it's always great to be the first. <laughs> we got two more things. Here we go. One is a Leaf stat. There's three players in Maple Leafs history that have three straight 80-point seasons. Can you name them? Oh, man. Three players in Maple Leafs history. So I think Boria would be one. I think Mats would be another. And are they only 80 points or do they go above that? Is it minimum? 80 plus. Three straight 80 plus point seasons. So here's my guess. Boria, Mats, and Daryl Sittler. Steve, who's your three? Okay, I don't think Boria. Five, maybe Vinny Danfus? Sittler. Oh. Ah. Sittler, Vive. I don't think Sundin did it. I don't think Gilmore did it. Ander Chuck might have done it. Are we, maybe, oh, are we missing oh, like Mitch oh, Marner? Yeah. Wait. Mitch. Mitch did it. You got Aust- submit, submit. Mitch Austin Sittler. Submit three. Okay, I'm gonna say Mitch. Yeah. Boria because I want to get crazy. Yeah. And I'll and I'll pull mats off that and I'll do Vinny Damfus. <laughs> Sittler, ah. Lanny McDonald, oh. and William Nylander. What? what? Really? Last night, he got 80 points, which is his third straight 80-point season. Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews have not had three, point, three straight 80-point seasons yet. Both of them will enter number four and number five on this list within the next couple of weeks when they hit their third straight 80-point season. That's got to be because of the shortened seasons, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Cool. That's yeah. So William That's Nylander cool. is only is the third player in Leafs history to have three straight eighty point seasons. But why is wow. he so soft and not worth it? <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason he did it is because he beat Matthews and Marner to that mark last night. That's amazing. Yeah. Pretty fun. Also, William Nylander is still the team leader in scoring. Yeah. He, he got his fiftieth assist last night. Man. So did Mitch. Mitch looks incredible. He Shit. looks quite. He good. is all the way back. It's very silly. That okay. So I I tweeted this last night. I was like, he's already a top three right-handed defenseman in the Matthews era. I go, I'm mostly joking. but No, name, you're not. Name three. Name three better. Who's in the conversation? I mean, you're talking in, in terms of skill or results. Yes. Because I would say skill-wise, Tyson Berry's got to be up there. Absolutely not. He has tons of skill. Yeah. You're talking yeah, about skating, no, but, puck handling? Yeah, Tyson Berry's fine. So you're talking results then? Okay, well, I, I was yeah. asking for skill or results, and you said doesn't matter. No, and I'm like, results. then it has to be... Results, because <laughs> okay. he had terrible results. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> no. Uh, like, then I so think... It's not Barry. It's it, certainly not. It's not CeCe. It's not. Can't be. Like, who's in the conversation? Luke, Hunwick? Luke Shen... Hunwick shot left. Oh, who shoots right? Shoots right. Luke Shen... Roman, Roman Polak, Polak. Uh, Justin Hall. It would have to be Justin Hall. Justin Hall was good. He like wasn't. is Connor Timmins top five? <laughs> like Timothy Lilligren? That's the conversation. Mm-hmm. Sorry, am I missing anybody? No, I don't think you are. I don't think of Igor Ojeganov. All right, that's the most move on. Are we moving? Yeah. Move um, last thing. This is from Doug. I thought it was interesting. What's up, Doug? Next Olympics. Since you chatted about the 2010 Canada versus UA game, a lot of people forget the gold medal game was tied by USA uh, with less than 30 seconds. Steve does not. Absolutely, no one forgets that. <laughs> There's Steve not doesn't. a human being alive who's. A lot of Canadians don't forget that. So this is scenario for next Olympics. Okay, Adam, your coach of Team USA. Mm-hmm. Steve, mm-hmm. your coach of Team Canada. Okay, great. Goalies pulled. 30 seconds left. Yeah. Adam's down. What six players is Adam throwing out there? For his his uh, goalie pulled lineup, Steve. What five players are you putting out there to defend Adam from scoring? Do do I get to decide Adam's players? No, your your team Canada. You're the Adam's ca- team USA. You're the coach of your team. 
Nah, uh. Maddie. Uh, All right. Uh, Maddie's laughing at you. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, so obviously I'm a Leaf fan, but obviously this is obvious. Yeah, it's Austin it's, Matthews. It's Austin Matthews. Yeah, he's gonna be yeah. one of your six. Um, Shit. <laughs> you got to defend him. I'm gonna Adam say. Uh, I'm gonna say Adam Fox. Okay. You I'm, know you're. Oh, yeah, never mind. No. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. No. No. Go. What are your six? My six, right? Okay. Yeah. Austin Matthews, Adam Fox. All right. Uh, Hart, Hart Trophy winner, Rocket Richard Trophy winner, Norris Trophy winner. Those three guys. Sure. Matthew Kachuk. Mm. That really sucks, doesn't it, Steve? Uh huh. Really, really sucks. Um. Then I'm throwing out Jack Eichel, Jacob Slavin, J T. Miller. And how many freaking what? players is that? <laughs> Whoa, that's Whoa. three. Whoa, Jacob Slavin, Jack Eichel, JT Miller, JT Miller, Matthews. Adam Fox, Matthews, and K- and, and, uh, and Kachuk. You already got six. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I'm good with that. Oh shit! I didn't. Take, I, and I didn't reason, even take Charlie McAvoy. The reason I uh, I was like a little down on your list very early on is because you took two defensemen. Well, I just figured with six, and the defense is you're trying to on. score a goal. <laughs> I know. Why did you get two defense? Because I figured Adam Fox could do all the offense and Jacob Slavin could do all the, hey, if somebody gets too high, you know, I don't know. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, Connor McDavid. Uh, ew, ew. Mark Stone. Gross. Um, Stinky. Makar, Taves. Uh, at this point, Aiden Hill. Oh, you picked your goalie too. Well, I probably ought to. Because it's six on five, right? Hill. Well, I have to pick six. Adam has to pick six. Who are yeah, your what, goalies? What is, what is it again? Hill? Aiden Hill. Kale McCarr, Devon Taves. Um, Connor McDavid, Nathan McKinnon. Um, friggin' Mark Stone. It's pretty good. It's a lot I, of speed. I don't think Adam scores. I hate the fact that Unless, Mark, Mark Stone's the one that bothers me the most. The takeaway uh, machine. Lowest one. I, don't, I think it's curious that you don't have Mitch Marner. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, are you a hater? Ugh. Defending yeah, who a league. How do I take off? Yeah, that's the thing, though. Like, do I it's Stone? Right. McKinnon? Mm-hmm. McDavid? And I mean, then and you you have two defense. And you don't have Sidney Crosby? Uh, who do I kick off? Games games taking place tomorrow. You don't have Crosby's Sidney Crosby. On the ice for that. You don't have Sidney Crosby on? Crosby's Game on, on the, the line. Game 30 Gun seconds. to the earth. Gun Gun to the earth. To Andre Iguodala? Yo, Mark Stone is your Andre Iguodala, I think. You are not. You don't have Sidney Crosby? It's Mark Stone, though. It's Sidney Crosby! So there'd be, there'd be the golden goal, and then if Mark Stone's out there, the golden stole, as in the stolen golden, puck. No. The golden... <laughs> this, Go to jail. <laughs> I liked terrible. it, and I think that you should too. The golden pound of tape on the uh, butt end of his stick. Um, no, that's my answer. I'm sticking to it. Wow. Damn. And Sydney, fans are going to be so mad. Sidney Crosby and Mitch Marner left off the ice. Wow. Wow. For yeah. Devon. Now, hey. imagine <laughs> I changed my. Oh, yeah, two defensemen. Mitch Marner. Can you play imagine defense. I put four forwards out there when an Mitch, asshole I'd look put like? Mi- put Mitch out there in the, in next to Makar. <laughs> on the right, yeah, have two righties out there. Uh, that's the most ridiculous imagine. part of it. Not, not that he's not a defenseman. That's that's the most ridiculous part of it. Yeah. Like, imagine I take out, uh, let's say McKinnon, and I put Marner. <laughs> People are like, this fucking guy. That would be. You can't do that. The guy who had the Matthews tweet last week just said Marner's better than McKinnon. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm. That's my answer. I'm sticking to it. Okay, Adam, I feel like you're lacking high end scoring. Like you got Matthews, obviously. Okay. Kachuk's gonna be able to get something in there. Yeah, Adam Fox. <sighs> like, who am I? Okay, I could go with like Gensel. No. Uh, no. Kyle Connor, Patrick Kane, Jason Robertson, Clayton Keller's probably in that conversation. Yeah. Alex DeBrincat. J- I put JT Miller and Jack Eichel. Up. You know, you know who I think really should be out there instead of Adam Fox. I'm not trying to disparage Adam Fox at all, but You're Quinn Hughes crazy that you think. It. Oh, one Quinn Hughes, oh. two Jack Hughes. Yeah, you can go yeah. either Hughes in that spot. Yeah, you and can. I and I would be happy. Would you go five forwards, one D? Or Maybe would... you're trying to score. 
Yeah, but if you can, if two of your D are Adam Fox and Quinn Hughes, I think you're. Good. Yeah, maybe I should yeah. take Slavin like, off and put Hughes on. I just can't take Adam Fox off the ice. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think it, it might be. I think it might be Hughes and Hughes and is Fox. probably better. Yeah, or he like Hughes and Jack Hughes. <laughs> like, and I uh, the reason okay and Luke and Luke and Luke <laughs> all of them. Let's put them all on. Uh, and the Craig Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Hugh Jack, the long lost other Hughes. Uh, the, if you and want Hughes. more finish, to Debrin Cat's an American. So yep. uh, anyway, I don't know. Uh, uh, the reason I, I wanted like, I wanted Matthews to be set up for his big shot, right? Mm-hmm. And I figured what, JT Miller can clean up rebounds and also shoot like a crazy man and do anything you want him to do. Jack Eichel is going to set you up. Adam Fox is going to set you up. Oh uh, no, dude, you have you have Eichel in the right handed bomb. You have Matthews in the left-handed bomb. You have JT Miller and Matthew Kachuk fucking shit up in front of the net. And then you have Quinn Hughes and Adam Fox walking the blue line. <laughs> That's going to be a crazy <laughs> That's team. pretty good. That's going to be a crazy-ass team, man. I can't wait to see that. Ooh. Can't wait. Now, to end the episode, we're going to do uh, something a little bit different. Randy Drusen, who is a an author, is going to join us. She's, she's talking about her book, Behind the Mask, a revealing look at 12 of the greatest goalies in hockey history. And what's crazy about this book, and, and, and really, really interesting, is that she interviews people around them. Mm-hmm. what made their careers, and, and she gets some pretty cool stories. And these are not just modern goalies, although Carey Price is involved. Yes. Uh, there are goalies all the way back to guys like Mike Palmatier and that, th- that sort of thing. So let's bring on Randy. Yeah. Bringing on Randy Drusen. The, the, uh, the, uh, the awesome. book is called Behind the Mask, um, and this is about 12 different star NHL goalies, some that you may have grown up with, some that were, you know, that have just retired, some that are a little bit more contemporary. Randy, uh, welcome to the show. We're so excited to have you on. Um, and I want to just run through the list of goalies that you've kind of done profiles on before we kind of get to the concept of the book. Roger Crozier, uh, Rogi Vachon, uh, Jerry Cheevers. Uh, this is one I, a name I don't know, Ed Giacomin. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Tony Esposito, Vlad Trekciak, Mike Paul Matier, Grant Fuhr, Roberto Luongo, Mark Andre Fleury, Henrik Lundqvist, and Carey Price. So, what was the goal, and and how is this book formatted? Because it's kind of different from any hockey book I've ever heard of. Yeah, I mean it's formatted like an anthology. So each goalie gets his own chapter. Um, so therefore, people who have interest in five goalies only have to read those five chapters. They don't have to read the rest. So every chapter is self-contained. And I did my best to make sure there was no, there's some overlap in some instances where the goalies played each other. I tried to make sure there were no discrepancies in describing a certain series from one chapter to the next. So there should be some consistency as well. Um, Okay, so let's let's go through some names here. We'll start with somebody that everybody knows, Marc-Andre Fleury. Mm -hmm. Uh, The chapter on him, obviously he's beloved, uh, really mean guy, yeah, hater, kind of nasty. <laughs> uh, what did you What did you find out about him? What What's the uh, wh- you know? There's so much done on Marc Andre Fleury, uh, but yeah. I think there's a lot that's still untold. Well, I think with him is he's such a nice person and he's so much fun, which is different than a lot of goalies that people overlook the fact he's very intense competitor. Like he will stay. He would stay on that ice and not leave until the coaches basically said, okay, it's time. You need to leave us alone now. He was really intense, and he's still intense, and I think that's why his career has lasted so long. It's not because he's a friendly guy, which he is. It's because he's an intense competitor, and he loves the game. Yeah. And, and, a, and a practical joker, I might add. Oh, yeah. yeah. No question. <laughs> no question. Um, uh, guys like, uh, you know, one of the things I think that is is such a crime, and it's politically a crime because Vlad Trechak never played an NHL game, but he is yeah. widely regarded as probably one of the top five goaltenders of all time still, oh, yeah. but in certain circumstances when you're doing, cause you're doing, you're talking to people, not just these goaltenders themselves, but you're talking to people around them. How did you right. even start the research on a guy like him? Yeah. Trechak was the most challenging chapter just because there's not as much written about him in, in uh, English language publications. So, um, you know, I just started by going through old newspaper archives, you know, following the 72 Summit Series, his other appearances in Olympics and World Championships. And I also spoke to um, Alex Braverman, who's a hockey insider, so to speak, who speaks Russian. So he really helped put me in touch with Trechak. And he did the interview for me by translating my questions into Russian and translating his answers into English. So that's how that interview worked. It was the first time I'd 
done anything like that, but I think it worked out quite well. Steve, you know how easy that is. Uh, it's extremely uh, not easy, actually, <laughs> uh, as as I've discovered. Former KHL impro- employee, Steve Dangle. Yeah, yeah, con- contractor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, that's right. Um, I want to know, and I think a lot of people want to know, about Carey Price, who's hmm. such an interesting figure in modern hockey, uh, just for how beloved he is in Montreal. And, I mean, I... I is... The lack of longevity, um, you know, hurts some of the all-time conversation with him, but there's no question that for a period of time, he was the most dominant goaltender in the NHL and arguably the most dominant player Mm -hmm. in the NHL. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And that one season was, you know, a record-setting season. Like, it was just phenomenal and all the awards he won and the people he amazed with his, uh, you know, performance. But also the thing about Price is, even when he wasn't at his best at the top of his games, he still freaked out NHL players. He still was in their heads and you were still getting comments from them saying he's the best goalie in the league, even when the stats suggested otherwise, you know, he just had this ability to get into the heads of opposing players in a way that a lot of goalies don't. It's, it's a fear, right? You almost wonder if like, he had to face better shots just because teams feel like they they had to elevate their game against him, right? I think so. I think also what I'm what comes to mind now is when he when there was a poll among NHL players, they ranked him as the best goalie, even though again his stats might not have backed that up. There might be other goalies who were statistically better, but from a psychological perspective, there was no one better at intimidating um, opposing shooters. I mean. From this era, you go back into the 90s and the 80s. There's other goalies who did that. But I think from the common era, the current era, rather, I think Price is probably one of the best at that. Why Why goalies for the, the subject of the book? Oh, you guys must know the answer to that. You're hockey guys. You know they're different. <laughs> they're yeah, weird. They're weird. <laughs> weird. I mean, I think traditionally a lot of them were very weird. You know, because it takes a certain kind of personality to want to stand in front of a puck without a mask. And that's the way it was, you know, in the beginning. Um, Now, because the equipment has improved and it's more, um, it's more systemized, the approach for like goalies to hone their skills and to go through the system. I feel like they're not quite as odd as they used to be because really odd person would not make it through that selection process. Um, But they are different. They do, you know, march to the beat of their own drummer. And in many cases, they're a little quirky. I wouldn't say completely odd, but I'd say a little quirky. Very much looking forward to the chapter on Mike Palmas here because oh, yeah. seeing him play in the in the Legends game, what, three, four years ago, or maybe even five years ago it's now, class, yeah, yeah. yeah, where he, he, he played and then he fell on his back and I'm like, please don't break something, man. Like it's amazing. It. Yeah. He was, yeah, yeah. He was like, okay, we got to go. Um, uh, Jesse, <laughs> you have any, anyone you want to add here? What's, I always like asking the author of the book, what's your favorite story from the book? My favorite story. Well, there's so many, mm-hmm. you know, that's why I like writing about goalies rather than say left wingers, you know, um, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> Mark Andre Fleury, when I was interviewing the goalie coach from the Penguins, said there was this time where he was standing on the ice at the end of a practice uh, chatting with someone about something and he heard this ruckus over at the bench and he looked over and he actually saw Fleury jumping over the boards into the bench, Superman style. (laughs) And he was such exuberance and there was such a great reception that it's something that stuck out in this goalie coach's mind enough for him to tell me this, you know, 10 years later. Like head first? I think so. (laughs) I asked for the details and he was laughing a little too hard to share them with me. But I mean, Superman didn't fly backwards. So it must have been. (laughs) I definitely, I I definitely expected that story to end with. So then he started doing it all the time. (laughs) But uh, thankfully, I think uh, for his team and his fans and his agent, um, he did not do that. Yeah. (laughs) The other thing that was great with uh, Flurry, I think you may have seen there was, there was um, a game last year where he wanted to get into was it last year or the season before? It may have been last season where he wanted to get into um, 
a dust up. Like Last he really with, wanted to get into a brawl. With Jordan Biddington. We talked about That's this right. at, like what three episodes? <laughs> yeah, ago? maybe even less. Ago? Yeah. yeah. Monday? Like we just yeah. talked about this incident. It's so funny that you bring that up. It was up. a great incident. You can yeah. see Flurry, like he basically said to the ref, like, I need to go get my stuff because I don't like having my hair this way. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So like, oh, okay, you better go get your, your mask then. You don't want your hair looking like <laughs> no. for everyone. <laughs> Behind the mask, a revealing look at 12 of the greatest goalies in hockey history history by Randy Drusen. Randy, thanks for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been fun. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.